Hi, my name is Luke. I practice in the field of integrative and lifestyle medicine. Integrative and lifestyle medicine puts you in center. It gives a 360 degree approach. You as a whole, we help you put it together, we help you find a way, and that is the power of integrative and lifestyle medicine. I hope you're having a great day. Today I want to talk about ulcerative colitis. This is inflammation of your large intestine, your colon and your rectum region. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this subject today is because a lot of people suffer from this and they believe that there is no medication that can take care of it. And there is no medication that can take care of it. There's great medication that can reduce inflammation and only treat the symptoms. And the point is, these patients continue to live with ulcerative colitis, which can destroy the quality of their life, their travel, their work life, and all of these problems. But lifestyle matters. And as I speak to you, we have hundreds of people who have actually put their ulcerative colitis into remission. Let's understand how you can do that, okay? The point is, what is ulcerative colitis? To fix any problem in life, it starts with understanding. If you don't understand, then you become a victim to everyone's opinion. You become a victim to the chase for more doctors and more treatment and more nutrition plans. So understanding. <clears throat> Ulcerative colitis is the inflammation of the large intestine and the rectum. So you have a wall within the large intestine. A lot of functions happen over here. Now, with this inflammation of the inner lining of the wall, your cells start to die. They start to get inflamed. You can get small ulcers. These ulcers can now become pussy. And because they become pussy, you can get infection. And then you put on antibiotics, which keeps you in a vicious cycle because you need a healthy microbiome to help repair any part of the human body. So now what happens is you start to get diarrhea-like symptoms. And now that doesn't really help because a perfectly way working colon would be we eat food during the day, okay? The waste collects in the large intestine ready to pass out through your rectum. Okay, so we can pass a motion once a day. Sometimes we can pass a motion after a meal, after two meals, that's fine. But when I have constant diarrhea, I want you to picture the large intestine and all the time stool passing out, stool passing out. So technically it makes the inner linings more and more inflamed because there's abrasion as anything passes through. So what we need to understand that you can be in a vicious cycle of ulcerative colitis, but you can break it down. While if you're on medication given to you by your doctor, please do not stop your medication. The beautiful part of lifestyle medicine is you integrate it with the medicine you're taking, you fix it, and then your doctors get you off the medication because you no longer require it. That's how it should work. So now what are some of the symptoms of this? Abdominal pain. I'm also going to tell you about the tests that you should get. Abdominal pain could be a symptom. Bloody stools. When you start to see blood in your stools, you need to get yourself checked out. Once or twice, fine, like you're constipated, it's a hard stool, and you know when you're pushing it out, you got some pain, it could have caused an abrasion, and you can have blood in your stools, but if it's continuous, you wanna get yourself checked. Diarrhea, constant diarrhea. Of course, you have food poisoning, you have diarrhea, you kind of correlate the two, but when everything is okay, and if you're still passing stools in a diarrhea-like manner, you wanna get yourself changed. Constant fever, it could be a constant low-grade fever that you have, pain in your rectal region, in your rectum. There's a pain that's constantly happening and sometimes this pain can be like a gripping pain. It doesn't have to be the pain of passing a stool, it could be a gripping pain, the muscles around the rectal region, like when you squat, when you sit, when you stand. Sometimes you have the urge to pass a stool, but you're not even passing a stool, you're not even on the pot and then you get this rectal pain. You wanna get that checked. Sudden weight loss and malnutrition, because that's a sign that your gut is not absorbing the nutrients from the food that you eat. Now sometimes, some of the other symptoms that happen along with this could be skin problems, mouth sores. Okay, now there could be several reasons. You could have a deficiency of folic acid as well for mouth sores. You could have arthritis for joint pain. But when you have constant joint pains and your doctor says, hey, it's not arthritis, it's, you know, nothing's wrong, your D3 levels are great, your B12 levels are great, you wanna check your gut again. Inflammation in the human body and a decrease in appetite. These are some other symptoms that you can have. Now the next question is, why do we get it? Sometimes it's genetic, very, very rarely. But even if it's genetic, it doesn't mean that you cannot change your lifestyle. Sometimes when you have a very, very bad bout of food poisoning or a stomach bug, and one of the biggest problems in our country and countries around the world, let's say you have food poisoning today or you have a stomach bug, okay? And your doctor gives you an antibiotic. D3 
day one you take the antibiotic, you feel better, and all of a sudden you say, I'm feeling better, and you stop the antibiotic. Okay, that's a big problem. You gotta finish the dosage of your antibiotics because sometimes, okay, the bug or the bacterial infection is still there. And now you've stopped the antibiotic, it doesn't kill everything. And this bacterial infection can grow and grow, creating minute damage in a systematic, in a systematic way over time. And all of a sudden you have uncontrolled inflammation in the gut. That's another reason. A lot of people and a lot of the medical world believes ulcerative colitis to be like an autoimmune condition where your own immune cells in the colon attacks. And it is highly possible because in most of our ulcerative colitis patients, they have a leaky gut syndrome and they have a Hashimoto's thyroid or an arthritis. So if you have an autoimmune condition already, like you have an arthritis or you have a lupus, or you have a Hashimoto's thyroid or an eczema or a psoriasis or an alopecia, and you have the same symptoms that I spoke about when, you know, in regards to the gut, you wanna get yourself checked. Because yes, when your immune system attacks your own cells, these cells start to die, inflammation. And the beauty is autoimmune conditions can be treated. There are many triggers. One is a leaky gut syndrome, two is chronic stress. Three, you could be allergic to a couple of foods, like if you're celiac and you're still eating gluten, that could be deadly for you. Or you're lactose intolerant, but you're still consuming lactose. That can also be deadly for you. So you need to understand, some people have an allergy to a nut, but they don't find out these things. And then you're healing, you're taking steroids, you're taking medication, but you're not taking out the root cause of what is causing your problem. So when you look at autoimmune, you look at the kind of foods, you look at your stress, you look at your sleep, you look at suppressed emotions, you look at your overall digestive system. Are you breaking down food the right way? Are you absorbing food? Are your pancreas secreting enzymes? Do you have a fatty liver that is compromising the extraction of fat from your food? So there are all these things. Digestion starts in the mouth, right up to the rectum. So if you have a problem with any part of your digestive system, you don't just treat that, you treat the entire digestive system. So what are some of the tests that you can get done? Your doctor may give you a blood test, your doctor may give you a stool test, you may do an endoscopy, you may do a colonoscopy. It's always gonna be your doctor's decision based on your symptoms, but do not leave these things unchecked. I don't mean to cause fear to you, but colorectal cancer today is huge, is huge. A little because of genes, massively because of our eating habits and our lifestyle. So you do not wanna have problems in your gut and your large intestine grow and go unnoticed. A lot of people have issues with the gut and they think antacids is the way to solve it. Well, you may be disguising a certain amount of pain, but you're allowing a problem at the root cause level to grow more and more into something very, very deadly. Okay, what else do you do when you come to this? While there are medications, like I said, that your doctor can give you, what are some of the lifestyle changes? Prebiotics and probiotics. When you, <coughs> when you have ulcerative colitis, Maybe you need the supplement form. Maybe you won't be able to get it from all of your foods, but there are some patients who manage just fine with whole natural foods which have prebiotics and probiotics and some don't. Fiber, okay, this is a very sensitive topic. There are two kinds of fiber, soluble and insoluble. If you put too much of fiber in a patient who has ulcerative colitis, they're gonna have a massive flare up, a lot of pain, a lot of bleeding. At the same time, if the fiber is too little, you cannot repair, you cannot repair the colon. You need resistant starches. Resistant starches are like your raw banana flour, pure ghee, cooled, cooked and then cooled potatoes, cooked and then cooled rice, rice kanji. There are many, many, many different resistant starches that have the ability to resist digestion and go to the colon. And before that, they interact with different parts of your microbiome and they actually heal the inner lining of the inflamed gut. But everything's a process. I cannot tell you how much fiber you need. You need to slowly try what kinds of fiber. Ulcerative colitis patients can make the mistake of eating salad and raw salads and raw foods are very hard to digest and it can create in insane amounts of inflammation, pain, and more and more bloody stools. So fiber has to be used the right way, a combination of soluble, insoluble. Bromelain found in pineapple is very, very repairing. And it's used today in allopathy as well as integrative medicine, Ayurveda, all forms of medicine to heal the colon. That is great for you. Turmeric is great. There are many, many foods, but again, it depends on do you only have ulcerative colitis or do you also have a problem with the small intestine? Some people have SIBO, which is small intestinal back, uh, bacteria overgrowth. Some of them have gut dysbiosis. So then you have to rebuild the entire system from how you chew your food to digestion in the stomach. Do you have the right amount of stomach acid? too much, too little, then are you able to digest, to produce digestive enzymes and the health of your microbiome. 
So it's very important. Everyone is unique and bio-individual. So you can't just say fiber's bad, fiber's good. Slowly, the patient has to be eased one meal at a time and finding that perfect plan that works. Too much of fat. Fat is great for you. The right fats are great in healing, but too much of fat could be a problem. Too little fat can also be a problem. So there are many things that you can do, and depending on that, that's how you make your plan. Sleep, because all the repair is going to happen while you sleep. Emotional wellness, you know, the body can't heal. The more you're in the sympathetic nervous system, no healing can happen. Regeneration and repair happens in the parasympathetic nervous system when you're calm, you're relaxed, you're cool. No matter how many problems you have in life, you've got to find ways to make yourself relax, to induce relaxation. And then movement. Very strenuous exercise could be bad for you. But moderate exercise and balance, a mix of resistance training, a mix of cardio, a mix of mobility, all of this increases blood circulation to the colon, which is required for your healing. So now that you understand ulcerative colitis, you know there's possibility, you know there's hope. It's not something that you should be living with because you're only suppressing a symptom. Today it could be ulcerative colitis, tomorrow it could be something more deadly. So you always want to pair lifestyle with medicine and make the difference. Because as I speak to you, I speak to you with conviction because it is possible. We've seen patients who no longer have ulcerative colitis, it's in remission. And in case they change their lifestyle and go back to a bad lifestyle, they have a flare up. It's all fair. That's how it works. That's how the human body works. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember, you care is all about you. And just one word of caution. Just because you have gut issues, stop overdoing it on probiotic supplements. You know, billions and billions of count, and you think, oh, wow, this is 50 billion. This is 75 billion. Let me put it. Just understand when you're fooling around or playing around with probiotic supplements, okay, you're interfering with an intelligence in the gut microbiome that no doctor, no scientist, no nutritionist yet understands. It can work for you, it can also work against you. So more billions doesn't mean it's a better supplement, that's marketing. Sometimes people do well with just a simple, old, plain, natural pre and probiotics. And remember, your probiotic is useless without a prebiotic. So just remember this because a lot of gut patients tend to kind of overdo it on their probiotics and they mess up their microbiome even further. Have a great day, everyone.